Heartbeat Alaska is brought to you in part by Coca-Cola. By Cook Inlet Region Incorporated, an Alaska Native Corporation promoting economic and social progress for people throughout the state. Heartbeat Alaska is also brought to you by the Alaska Commercial Company, Alaska's leading retailer of food, family apparel, and general merchandise in remote Alaskan communities, with continuous service since 1867. Heartbeat Alaska is also brought to you by the Public Information Office of the North Slope Borough. We are one people under one sky. With separate languages and ways, we are the heartbeat of Alaska. We open our hearts to you and welcome you to Heartbeat. Alaska. Hello and welcome to Heartbeat Alaska. I'm Jeannie Green, bringing you native news across the north. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm very glad to be here today. Yesterday, I was on a float in the Fur Rani Parade, which was a lot of fun. However, it was also very cold. As a matter of fact, the wind blew part of our float away. We had worked for hours drawing and painting these whales. No one saw them but us. Just listen to that wind. Now, I've heard of flying fish, but this was ridiculous. There I was on the float, all bundled up, acting silly, having fun, and raring to go. Little did I know that minutes after the parade would start, we'd lose our whales to the wind. The side panels just blew away. I truly wish we had video of that. People were running alongside, trying to hold the panels on, while others were desperately trying to nail them on. It must have been a very funny sight. We still haven't recovered the panels. If you should glance up at the sky one day and see a whale flying by, it may not be your imagination. I'd like to thank Lily and Victor Van Fleet for their help in their float, as well as John Dimmick, Gary Fife, and Dale. Also, Sealand for allowing us to decorate the float in one of their bays. Also, I'd like to thank CCM Corporation. They sell satellite receivers and dishes to a lot of people in rural Alaska, and I can see why. They're very nice people. Thank you, Mr. Bill Clay. Also, I'd like to thank the Teamster Union, Cal the Dispatcher, Mr. Mark Johnson, and especially our driver during the parade, Galen. It was a lot of work, but we had a lot of fun. Today's show is going to be packed with news. We have news with Tina Corwin from the North Slope Borough. And John Active is back with us from KYUK Public Television and Radio Station. We have all that, plus a fabulous Native American Indian rock group who I'd like to introduce you to. Their name is Red Thunder, and you will love them. All that, plus much more. But first, here's Gary Fife with Native News Across the Nation. And by the way, Gary, thank you very much for all your help. This is Native News Across the Nation. I'm Gary Fife. This past week, Alaska Native health professionals have met with federal agency representatives in Anchorage to discuss methods for a Native agency to assume the management of and responsibility for, for providing health care to Natives statewide. The idea is to work at a large-scale multi-tribal compact with the Indian Health Service under which natives would receive funding to manage health care for themselves. The plan would replace the current Indian Health Service structure and according to Alaska Native Health Board Executive Director Ann Walker, it's the chance for natives to tell the White House what they want to see during the national health care reform effort. Dr. Richard Monsager, director of the Alaska Native Medical Center, says he favors the native management idea, but he'd like to see the Anchorage facility remain as a single entity. Whatever plan gets developed will be under review until May of this year, and in October, a final changeover to native management should take place. This week has seen an international organizing effort by indigenous women from North, Central, and South America and Russia. It was actually the second meeting of the Continental Congress of the Women of the Americas held in Arlington, Virginia. 
Gloria Dewis, chairperson of the group's planning committee, explained the session was to enable the Native women to network with each other and have a voice in addressing the issues that Native women face in their own countries. The Washington, D.C.-based Native Women's Planning Committee will serve as the contact in the United States. Native members of the Zapatista Army of National Liberation have been able to get the federal government of Mexico to come to the negotiating table. The Indigenous People's Army began their armed revolt against the, the Mexican government to protest exploitation of their peoples and lands by outside land developers and government agencies they say have been unresponsive. A Mexican government peace envoy announced this week that rebel leaders had agreed to release the governor of the state of Chiapas where the revolution broke out. Both sides have agreed to come to the bargaining table on Monday to discuss further lessening of tensions, but no site has been announced. Over 100 people are reported to have been killed in six weeks of fighting. The financial success continues for the Mashantucket Pequot tribe of Connecticut and the tribe sharing the wealth with local community agencies. In fact, the Pequots have made what appears to be the largest single donation to a nonprofit agency. The tribe gave $2 million to the 1995 Special Olympic World Games to be held at Yale University. The games are expected to draw up to 6,500 athletes who are physically and mentally challenged. The Pequot Nation says it believes strongly in bridging cultural differences in the interest of promoting greater harmony and friendship, and the history of Native Americans throughout this land gives them a special understanding and compassion for people who are sometimes outside of the mainstream of society. February 16th marked an important day in the civil rights struggle for Alaska Natives. It was Elizabeth Paradovich Day. The day has been set aside to honor the struggle that Paradovich carried out to end discrimination against the Native people of Alaska. She began the campaign during the 1940s to end such practices that barred Native from restaurants, stores, and other public places, and signs that read, All White Help and No Natives Allowed. The February 19th, on February 16, 1989, the Alaska Native Brotherhood and the Alaska Native Sisterhood celebrated the first Elizabeth Paradovich Day. Alaska Governor Steve Cooper's executive proclamation read in part, ANS Grand President Elizabeth Paradovich worked tire tirelessly to overcome the prejudices and discrimination toward Alaska Natives. Her work and testimony were instrumental in the passage of the anti-discrimination law. And Jeannie will have more on that later. And finally, the Pawnee Tribe of Oklahoma has come to the end of a long-standing dispute with the Nebraska State Historical Society over burial artifacts and skeletal remains. The two parties have decided to drop pending legal action after talks produced some results. A state law was passed in Nebraska requiring the return of some skeletal remains and artifacts, but the Pawnees and the society, which held the material, could not agree on what should be returned and the tribe pursued a lawsuit into the Nebraska State Supreme Court. The settlement includes a plan for repatriations plus payment of the tribe's legal fees. The agreement will allow Pawnee tribal officials to review several hundred additional skeletal remains and about 4,000 more artifacts. This is Native News Across the Nation. For Heartbeat Alaska, I'm Gary Fye. Thank you, Gary. We'll be back with Tina Corwin from the North Slope Borough right after these messages. Do you know a Native American? Maybe you rode one lately. Maybe you drank one last night. Seen one on the Late Late Show? <laughs> Cured for one lately? Maybe you've been to a sweat. Smoke them piece by Come on, man, times have changed. Free your mind. If you have news or information from your community that you would like to share with our viewers, please contact Heartbeat Alaska at 2611 Fairbanks Street, Suite D, Anchorage, Alaska, 99503, 
or give us a call at area code 907-272-8111 or fax us 272-7005. Welcome back. Recently at Barrow, they had a huge celebration called Kivigik. Tina Corwin reports. Good evening. I'm Tina Corwin bringing you news from the North Slope Borough. As you may know, the North Slope Borough recently hosted a Kivigik, a traditional midwinter gathering of Inupat from all over the Arctic for three days of singing, dancing, trading, and potlucks. One of the highlights of Kivigik 1994 was the presence of the Uwalan dance group called Nubukogamut from Russia. This is the first time in recent memory that Russian dancers have participated in a Kivigik. Since the theme of this year's Kivigik was sharing our Inupet bounty and living traditions, it seemed to be very appropriate that this year the sharing went beyond local and national boundaries. It wasn't only their dancing that made the Russian visit so special. They also took time one morning to share their thoughts and memories on what life was like in Russia when attempts were made to destroy their culture. They spoke about being forced to leave their traditional villages. The villagers were sent to different villages to live in an effort to destroy their kinship ties. Most moving of all was when they spoke about reviving their dance tradition as a way to keep their cultural memories alive. It was through their d dance that they began to regain their culture and their pride in who they were. Sit back now and enjoy with us a few moments of the highlights of their dancing and their joy in being with other Eskimos, sharing such an emotional cultural activity. And our dance group was formed uh, to try and preserve as well as we can the dance traditions which had been passed on to us by our ancestors. And uh, we're doing our best today to keep those traditions and to pass them on ourselves to the younger generations in our villages. For Heartbeat Alaska and the North Slope Borough, I'm Tina Corwin. Kuyunakbuk. Thank you, Tina. We turn now to Bethel, Alaska, where John Active from public television station and radio station KYUK-TV gives us his report. Thank you, Jeannie. Jamai, Alaska. Akumaugo. Here's the latest news from Southwest Alaska. 
Lower 48 style fast foods may be coming to Bethel soon. Alaska Commercial Company is negotiating with Burger King, Pizza Hut, and other fast food franchises to operate concessions in its Bethel store. AC plans to use the space once occupied by the Northern Stars Jewelry Store. Owner Warren Lotsky recently went out of business after he was unable to settle on a new contract with AC. AC is converting that space into a deli and bakery with room for some fast food concessions. Corky Matthews of AC says he's not sure how many fast food businesses will be a part of the expansion project because it's not easy to arrive at the right combination of fast food franchises. Each has certain space and energy requirements that aren't necessarily compatible. Further complicating things, AC is trying to attract some of those fast food businesses to some of its other stores. Matthew says there are a lot of ifs right now that may take several weeks to untangle. In any case, AC is anticipating a major upgrade in its electrical system and to accommodate the fast food businesses. It may also have to reconfigure other parts of the store to make room for the expansion project. Bethel police officers have the heaviest workload and the lowest pay in rural Alaska. That's according to 1993 numbers recently released by the Bethel Police Department. Jeff Kennedy has more. The Bethel Police Department got a record number of calls last year, over 11,000, despite fewer police on the road than in previous years. Last year, the police department had only 10 officers. That compares to 16 in the mid-1980s. The combination of more work and fewer officers to do the work contributed to the high turnover on the force. Six officers quit last year. Pay's also a factor. Bethel pays beginning cops $15.70 an hour, less than Nome, Kotzebue, the North Slope Borough, Dillingham, and Cordova. Bethel police officers last year averaged 91 arrests each. By comparison, Kotzebue officers averaged 64 arrests each, while North Slope officers arrested only 13 persons each. Only Kotzebue officers had more requests for service, 1,000 per officer, compared to 907 per Bethel officer. Other communities range from 276 calls per officer on the North Slope to 765 in Dillingham. In Bethel, I'm Jeff Kennedy. Bethel City Council member Hal Jones says he's pushing for two more police officer positions. Jones, who is a former Alabama State Trooper, says one community service officer position could be upgraded into a regular police officer position. State fish tax money could also be used to pay for the new positions. Quick response from the Quick Look Fire Department saved a house in the village on Friday. The fire broke out in Adam Andrews' home when Andrews' son tried to thaw out an oil line underneath the house with a blowtorch. When village public safety officer Max Olick spotted the fire, he saw smoke coming from inside and underneath the house. The volunteer fire department had the fire out within 45 minutes. Damage was contained to about $1,000 and no injuries were reported. Another fire in Guikluk, one that burned down the general store last fall, caused the village considerable hardship this winter. But on Wednesday, Villagers put the past behind them. Quick Look has a new store. Fire investigators believe an electrical problem triggered the fire in the old store. Manager Nick Epchuk says fire insurance covered the store and its contents. Since then, supplies have been flown in from an Anchorage distributor. The store burnt down last September 1st, last year, as volunteer firefighters failed to get a fire engine started. Firefighters from Bethel went by helicopter to help fight the fire. Epchuk has managed the store for 35 years. He says the new building is the same size, but the new store has a little more room because less is used for storage. Students in the Lower Kuskokwim School District got a real treat this week. Yupik storyteller Rita Blumenstein returned to the Delta to share stories with children in 14 villages. We caught up with her in Napaskiak. We 
I even decide to go down the beach. Rita Blumenstein is recognized by the Smithsonian Institute as a cultural treasure. From the time she was a teenager, she began traveling the world, sharing Yupik stories and culture. Blumenstein now lives in Palmer. She's originally from Dununuk. Old timers in the Bethel area remember when she worked as a medical assistant, where she assisted in almost 200 births. Maybe that's why working with children comes natural to Rita. One of the storytelling techniques children love the best is the way Rita uses string. This is the tent. And two little boys are sleeping in there. And the wind start blowing, and the tent start collapsing and collapsed. And two little boys. Of course, the kids couldn't resist getting in the act themselves. The left hand goes into your index. What's that? I mean, Funding to bring Rita home to the Delta came from the Federal Migrant Education Program. In the past, that money was used to bring authors and storytellers from outside the area. Many native parents were happy to have one of their own serve as a role model for the children. When you, when you get it down here, start twisting it while it's way down. Back and don't pull it out. Twist now. Now. Kulana Nitugniluchi, thank you for listening. Reporting from public radio and television station KYUK in Bethel, Alaska, I'm John Mack. Thank you, John Active. It's nice to have you back. We'll return with Red Thunder right after these messages. From time to time, it's my pleasure to introduce you to some Native American and Indian rock groups from North America. Well, today, I have that pleasure once again. This time, it's Red Thunder. Respect for the earth, respect for the water, respect for the creator, respect for life itself. Your friend. 
gets close, your enemy's closer. Ah, be careful now, not to force her. There's a heartbeat, loud as thunder. Revolution is in the air. There's a For joining me for another Heartbeat Alaska, Native News Across the North. Hello to Canada viewers, hello to Arizona, hello also to the Russian Far East viewers, also to our viewers in Greenland. Thank you so much for joining us. Next week we will visit the Aleutian community of St. George plus more news from Indians and Eskimos all over the nation. For Heartbeat Alaska, I'm Jeannie Green. See you next week. Go check you on the air. Let your dog on a whole people. Great Spirit, grant me vision that I may not go wrong and find myself in prison of things I have not done. Teach me the secret. That I might see Fill my heart with compassion To love my enemy Mother Earth Will feed our hunger Father Sky human tongue